Hi everyone, Flora Sage here. Today is the spring equinox where it is equal parts day and night here in the northern hemisphere. If you're in this southern hemisphere, it is the fall equinox. So this is the perfect time to look at balance and the bullshit that's in your life. So earlier today in the Mastermind Mafia, we had our What's Up Wednesday spiritual training call and we also had our Ask Me Anything. Now, a couple of the themes that I saw and that I noticed during these calls was that, you know, as we go through our day, as we, as we live our life, it's easy for us to feel like we have to maintain a certain status quo, like we have to maintain doing this routine or that routine and yada yada. And, you know, on this equinox day, what happens is our, our lives tend to kind of shift from having more night and less day into equal day, equal night, and then vice versa. So then we have more day and less night. And so as we have more daylight hours, we start to do more things throughout the day. We start to um, go on maybe longer trips or we stay up later or whatever. And the rhythm of our life changes and shifts. And so one of the things that we did in our What's Up Wednesday spiritual training call this morning was we paid attention to our breath as we breathed in and out. And we recognized if there was a balance between the two. We recognized how much longer or shorter the in-breath versus the out-breath was. And this is kind of similar to our life right now is, you know, look at what are you currently bringing into your life and what are you currently putting out into your life? What is the pace, what is the pace and rhythm of your life right now? Um, here in Wisconsin and Minnesota, I actually live on a border town, um, there's snow on the ground, there's puddles of melted snow, there's lots of water, there's lots of flooding, there's still ice. Uh, some days are sunny, some days are not sunny, but regardless, the snow is melting and I'm starting to see the shift from winter into spring into then summer. And so the, the pace of outside is a slow yet steady movement towards the light. Slow and steady movement towards warming. Slow and steady are, are the buds that are coming. I, um, my you know like boyfriend and I were actually driving the other day and we saw this ice dam. And so we got out and we walked and it was absolutely just mesmerizing. But we saw like probably 50 robins out like walking on this ice dam. And we were like, oh my gosh, the first robins of the season. This is so cool. <laughs> and so, you know, these little subtle signs are everywhere that your life is shifting from one phase to another phase. But what happens if you don't reflect on the rhythm of your life right now, life can just kind of barrel over you and then you're like, well shit, what the hell happened? <laughs> you know? So today give yourself permission to just kind of slow down just enough so that you can look at, you know, what is the rhythm of my life right now? Is it really fast paced? Is it slow paced? Is it a very chaotic pace where you feel like you can't catch your breath? You can't get all those things done that you want to get done. You constantly feel rushed or, or you've got those days where there's absolutely nothing going on. And because you've been so rushed all the other days, on the days that you don't have anything going on, you pretty much just collapse and just sleep all day. So really look at, you know, how is my life in harmony? How is it balancing out? And um, with that said, let's talk about balance and what this is. So I believe, and this is a, a you know concept that I first heard years and years ago from one of my colleagues, Sunny Don Johnson, and she talked about balance being a balance beam. And when you walk on a balance beam, you really have no room for error. I mean, you're either on the beam or you're on your ass on the floor, okay? But when you look at the concept of creating harmony in your life, what that looks like it's kind of like a band, okay? Or kind of like cooking. So when you're in a band, you've got the singer, you've got the drum player, the bass, the saxophone, the guitar, whatever it is. 
and so everybody's doing their thing they're keeping time and they're jamming out and whatever and then you got the singer who's singing and then every once in a while like somebody else takes center stage so you've got like the the you know um trumpet player that does a little trumpet solo and then you got the bass player that does their thing and everybody else is kind of waiting in the wings or just chilling out keeping time well that's the same thing that we should strive for in our life is there are certain times when certain activities or aspects of your life are going to take center stage it could be a death a birth a sickness a celebration um, it could be a new relationship that you're nurturing. It could be a new job that you're learning. It could be a research project. Um, it could be a, a new you know, project for your business. Whatever it is, that's going to take center stage while everything else can kind of keep time. Or if you're a cook and you have like all four burners or all six burners going on your stove, you've got a couple things simmering, one thing that you're sauteing, another thing that you're boiling, and those things that are simmering, you can know that, well, these are just going to simmer. They're going to be fine. Meanwhile, I'm going to pay closer attention to these two or one specific things um, on the stove. And that's kind of the same thing. And so really look at, you know, how can you start to create harmony in your life? How can you start to really look at the ebb and flow and all the chaos and all the bullshit and all the stuff that's going on in your life and say, okay, wait a minute. Er does all this really resonate with me still? Do I really care about this or that or this? Do I really want to keep doing these things? You know, is, is the rhythm of my life feeling great or is it chaotic, whatever? But just stop what you're doing and just t spend 10 minutes today and just reflect and look at how your life feels right now. Does it feel in flow? Does it feel good? Does it feel stuck or stagnant or whatever it feels like for you and just really just stop and say how does my life feel right now what am i neglecting what am i putting all my energy towards and give yourself permission to shift give yourself permission to kind of weave in a new reality and and that new essence that you want to bring in so you know some people especially during this time of year they want to bring in more of the outside they want to bring in more activity they want to bring in more things that lift them up they want to bring in all of those things so then ask yourself okay well what does that look like does that mean going out for walks every day if it does do you have the gear i mean do you need a you know um rain suit if it's going to be raining i've got galoshes that i love and i wear them all the time in the spring because it's usually wet in the spring and i, I was um recently at um someone's house and i walked in and they're like oh my god i love your rain boots i didn't even think to wear those and everybody else is walking in like, oh my God, my feet are so wet and muddy. And it's like, and I had, I had, you know, rain boots on and it was perfect for it. And I actually purposely stepped in the puddles because I like doing that. And that's why I wear rain boots. <laughs> so, I mean, these little tiny tweaks you can make in your life that can help your life flow much more smoothly. Like if I were to wear regular shoes, I would have been stressing out about getting them wet as well. And I'm like, fuck it. I know that this time of year, it's rainy, it's wet, it's muddy. So how can I equip myself so that I can enjoy the time that I'm outside? Get rain boots, get galoshes, they go up to my knees. I can literally step in almost knee deep puddles or knee deep mud and I'm fine. So this is like a perfect metaphor for life is like what's going on in your life that's full of shit, that's full of wet, muddy, gunky stuff that you don't want to get all over yourself. Okay, well address it. <laughs> Figure out if you can't change it, how can you make it a little bit smoother in your life? How can you look at it in a different way with a different perspective so that you can start to actually have more fun? And that's another thing that we talked about during today's What's Up Wednesday call is when you look at your life, when you look at if it's chaotic or if it's full of bullshit or if it's full of things that just seem hard to you, like if you're in a relationship that's hard or if you're trying to lose weight or if you're trying to get out of debt and that just feels hard, well, ask yourself, well, who said relationships have to be hard? Like, where did I first learn this from? Or who said or, or how did I learn that losing weight is hard or releasing weight or... Where did I first learn that getting out of debt was hard? Or who taught me that? You know, 
and, and start to really question where these beliefs came from and then ask yourself, okay, so what would it feel like for me if getting out of debt was easy? What would it feel like if being in a relationship was easy and fun and joyful, free from bullshit? What would it feel like for me if losing weight and releasing weight was a piece of cake, literally and metaphorically? What would it feel like? How would your life shift? How would your energy shift? How would you show up differently? Think about that. So look at your life as it is right now and ask yourself, does it feel chaotic? Does it feel fluid? Does it feel easy? Does it feel hard? Take stock of where you're at. And then say and ask yourself, okay, so why, do, why is it hard for me? Why does it feel chaotic? Why does it feel good? Why does it feel fluid? Why does it feel the way that it does? And who taught me or told me or, or where did I learn that things need to be chaotic or need to be hard or that this is challenging or that could be challenging? Is it because you're overthinking it and you're trying to do it in a way that somebody else taught you? So if things are hard or chaotic or feeling out of balance and, and feeling out of harmony, stop what you're doing and ask yourself, okay, so if this were easy, what would I do? If getting out of debt was easy, what would I do? If being in a relationship was easy, how would I approach my relationship? If losing weight or releasing weight was easy, how would I approach food? How would I approach exercise? If gaining new clients in my business was easy, how would I go about my day in my business? How would I go about my day in a video? How would I go about my day when I cold call people who are interested in my work? What would that look like for me? If it was easy, what would happen with your mindset? What would happen with your energy? What would happen with your presence and with your state of mind? So, this is one of the things that I really want to impress upon you today, okay? Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. That's by Henry Ford. This is one of the biggest and most profound quotes and, and, and the ones with the biggest impact that, I, that has had that... What am I trying to say? <laughs> That quote has had one of the biggest impacts on my life since I first read it years and years ago because it's so true. And so if you think your life is going to be hard, then it's going to be hard. If you think life is going to be easy, then it's going to be easy. Then you just kind of roll with the punches and you just find opportunity and obstacles and you've, you've all seen it. You've all seen people who just seem like they just kind of skate through life. And then other people that it's just, their life is just a freaking shit show. And then most of us kind of are in, kind of in the middle where we got shit show and then it's easy. And then it's shit show and then it's easy. But you can slowly but surely move on and get rid of the shit show energy and move into that life of ease and grace and flow and fun and reinvention. But you have to be honest with yourself. You have to give yourself permission to say, okay, where am I at? And you have to know where you're starting from in order to figure out where you're going. This is just like a GPS. When you, you know, okay, this is my phone. All right, so where am I starting? Where, where are you starting from? Where is your current location? Hey, kitty. And where do you want to go? Where is your destination? Where do you want to end up? Or where are you hoping to go? Okay? Because when you figure that out, then getting there, is, it's all you have to do is just follow the baby steps. So take stock in where you're at right now. What does your life look like? Is it chaotic or is it easy? Is it hard or challenging or is it pretty fun? Is it full of bullshit or do you eliminate the bullshit as it comes up? Do you address things as they enter your life? And then they won't be bullshit anymore. They won't even, they'll, they'll, they'll actually be a non-issue because you'll have addressed them right away. Okay? And when you look at the energy as it is today 
And those little incremental shifts that happen just as spring or you know winter very slowly turns into spring, which very slowly then turns into summer, which then very slowly turns into fall and then back to winter. And it's this beautiful cycle. So when we can recognize that beautiful cycle of change, which change is the only thing, that's the only thing that we can count on, is that things are going to change. And when you focus on the ebb and the flow of life and you focus on where you're at now in your life, the season that you're in right now, right now I'm an empty nester. Um, both of my kids have flown the coop. And so now I'm starting a new chapter in my life. And I seriously have never been this happy. I didn't think I could get any happier than what I was a year ago and two years ago and three years ago. But every day I get more and more happy and more and more fulfilled because I conscious about my life. I'm conscious about the things that I bring into my life and who I spend time with or whom I spend my time with and the conversations that we have. And if something comes up that I want to have clarification about, I ask the person. I ask my son, I ask my boyfriend, I ask my sisters, I ask my clients. Whatever it is, I don't assume anything. I ask. And so much pain and agony and so much bullshit and so much hard energy and challenging energy usually comes from making assumptions, making assumptions of yourself, making assumptions from other people. And the spring equinox is the perfect time to recognize that having that beautiful dance between you and all the other people in your life can make life easy. But you gotta give yourself permission to be honest with where you're at, where you wanna go, and, and what, where you want to go looks like, like what does that really look like? And then work towards it. And working towards it doesn't have to be hard. It can actually be quite easy. But like I said, you gotta be honest with yourself about what you're willing to put up with and what you're not willing to put up with. Including the bullshit from yourself. <laughs> you gotta call yourself on your own bullshit, people. And that's, you know, part of it is just saying, okay, why does this feel hard? And who taught me or told me that this is hard? And then ask yourself, how can I let this be easy? How can I let this be easy? How can I let this be easy? And continue to ask yourself that because the thing is, is if you continuously think something is going to be hard, it's going to be fucking hard. But if you ask yourself, okay, so this has been hard for me in the past, but I'm willing to learn something new how can this be easy? And then Google it or hire a coach or mentor who's been there, done that, and let them help you. Let them guide you in moving from where you are to where you want to be. But the key for all of this is you got to be willing to take stock, honest stock of where you're at. Okay. And this is the perfect time. Today is the perfect day for reflection and the perfect time for you to get really clear with yourself. And I know I keep repeating myself because it's just so freaking important. And so I really want you to think about where you're at today, where you're at with your finances, with your wealth, which is two different things, um, with your partnerships, you know, who are you in partnership with? So your mate for life, your or your mate for now, however you swing, you know, um, your partnerships for work, you know, if you have team members, how are you partnered up with them? Are you both on the same page? Is it both, is it a healthy partnership? Whether, you know, for if, if you have an assistant, if you have a graphic person, if you have a CPA or whatever, do you still resonate with those relationships? Are those partnerships still healthy? Or do you need to, you know, maybe form new partnerships? Okay, um, your partnerships with your clients, those are partnerships as well. And, and these partnerships are not 50-50, okay? Otherwise, it's everybody just half-assing it and then it's just gonna be a shit show, okay? Are you 100% committed to the partnerships that you're in? So are you 100% committed to the, the you know, partnerships that you have with your clients in your business? 
Are you in 100% partnership with the people that are on your team in your business, like your office manager, your business manager, your admin, your graphic person, your website or SEO person? Are you 100% in partnership with them? Are you willing to be honest and open with them about your needs and what you expect from them? The whole shebang, okay? Um, are you 100% in partnership with your partner in life, your, your life partner, your mate, whether you call that husband, wife, whatever? Um, are you 100% in partnership with yourself? Are you honest with yourself? Are you willing to show up for yourself as if you would show up for someone else and vice versa? Are you in 100% partnership with your children or your parents? or anyone else that you are in partnership with your life. Because I'm here to tell you, if you half-ass any of these relationships, it's going to impact everything else in your life. Because if you've got something going on with a significant partner, whether it's a client, a team member, your life partner, your kids, your parents, there's gonna be that ripple effect. And so this is, like I said, the perfect opportunity to just stop and take stock. And you'll know, like this exercise does not take very long. You literally can just sit here and say, what feels hard in my life right now? And you should be able to go, oh, this, this, and this, or just this, or these five things, or whatever. Okay, why does it feel hard? Has it always felt hard? Has it just been hard over the last couple weeks? Has it just been hard over the last couple years? When did it first start feeling hard? And what would it feel like if it was easy? What would it feel like if it was easy? And what would have to happen for it to be easy? You might need to scrap everything you know about whatever it is and say, okay, so if I forgot everything about how to get out of debt, because it's not working so far, so okay, if I scrap everything that I've been trying to get out of debt and pretend I don't know anything, what would I now try or do in order to get out of debt or in order to lose weight or in order to have a healthy relationship with my partner or in order to gain five clients this next month? If I forgot everything I've ever learned and I needed to learn something new on how to do this, what would I do? First and foremost, ask yourself, is this what I really want? Next thing, you could Google it, okay? The next thing, you could say, do I know someone who has been there, done that, who has already accomplished what it is I wanna do? You know what I mean? And when you can be honest with yourself and say, you know, I don't even really wanna get out of debt, or I don't even really want to do this, or I don't even really wanna do that, then it's a non-issue, then you don't even have to worry about it. <laughs> you know, um, after the, the ending of my third marriage, I briefly dated someone and that was a fucking shit show. I mean, that was just an absolute and utter train wreck. And so I'm like, all right, I broke up with the person and I'm like, all right, peeps, I'm out. I'm not doing anything else, no more self-help in, in relationships until I figure out what to do next because what I had done in my first, second, third marriages, I was pretty much in uh, marriage counseling and therapy and relationship counseling and therapy and communication counseling and therapy the entire freaking time and nothing was working. In fact, it felt like it was getting worse. So I stopped all of that and I just said, all right, peeps, show me what the hell to do. And, but I stopped, I stopped reading all the books. I actually gave all my books away for, for like, you know, marriage fitness and all these other books that I had been reading throughout the years. And I'm like, I'm done. All this stuff has not worked. So I'm just gonna pretend I just, I'm, I'm in that neutral space and I'm just gonna wait for something new to pop in. And so I was having lunch with a new friend of mine and we were talking about relationships. And she said, you do realize you're codependent, right? And I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Granted. I'm a life coach, but in my life coach certification, we touched on, you know, codependency just briefly. So I Googled it and was like, oh my God, I'm codependent. This is so freaking exciting. And she's like, seriously, I've never seen anybody excited to be fucking codependent. And I'm like, you don't understand. I've been wanting to fix my relationships for so long, almost two decades. And now I know how, now I know how. And so... 
I started to go to you know codependency anonymous meetings I started to work the steps and I actually worked the steps several times and I got a sponsor I got some sponsees and I was like okay this is great but I felt like I was in a bubble I didn't know if what I was doing was actually working because I wasn't in an intimate relationship so what I did then was I put out to the universe all right peeps I want to date and so um, a, a you know sister of mine actually because I've got many sisters <laughs> I've got six sisters um, she introduced me to someone we started dating we were dating for a couple months and I realized I'm like you know this is great but this is not a forever relationship so I broke up with the person and I actually wrote several blog posts about that and I the old codependent me would have stayed in the relationship but the new me knew that it wasn't forever and it wasn't long term so I broke up with the person so then again a couple of years go by doing the steps again one more time I'm like I really want to make sure that this is good um, I still didn't get into any new relationship books because I'm like you know this is good meanwhile practicing all of the things that I'd been learning about open communication honest communication all these things with my clients as well as the people in my life and other people and dabbled in a couple relationships very brief relationships and I was like okay you know what I think I'm ready to really be in a, a very committed partnership with someone and I sat down and made a list my, my manifesting list and I'm like all right peeps it's time and literally I need to do the math but I literally less than two weeks later that person came into my life and blew my freaking socks off and dare I say the rest is history so but it I had to get honest with myself and granted this is a, a several years in the making scenario where I just was like I'm not happy I got a divorce um, I mean so this has been going on like what six years ago now where I asked for a divorce got divorced and stopped working on my relationship stuff because what I had been doing wasn't working okay and so when I tell you just forget everything that you've learned there's a reason because I've been through this myself okay I've been through hard I've been through challenging I've been through bullshit and if you give yourself permission to just stop the madness <laughs> just say okay obviously what I'm doing is not working so I'm just gonna stop all of it like I had this one friend ever since I met her she's been dieting she's been obsessed with drink shake thingies that make you lose weight and these other additive things and these patches and these powders and all these all this stuff but she's been obsessed with losing weight and it, I know because I've seen this happen with myself I've seen this happen with other people when you stop obsessing over what's wrong and you start to say okay so obviously what I'm doing is not working so I'm just gonna stop all of it I'm just gonna stop all of it and just be I'm just gonna be you know and is it scary just being well absolutely because you don't have a plan you're just kind of just hanging out in limbo okay but then you just say all right peeps God goddess universe whomever is up here for you all right peeps show me the next step show me how I can get the result that I want easily that's it just show me show me the next step and be open and receptive to it and and then wait and that might be the hardest part is just waiting and giving yourself permission to just say all right peeps and trust that you're gonna be okay in the process <laughs> trust that you're gonna be okay in navigating what to do next like when I found out I was codependent I'm like sweet and then I realized shit I have to go to meetings and shit I need to actually work the steps was it scary absolutely did I put off doing the steps for a little bit yeah I did because I was like eh, I don't, maybe I can I, I you know because I'm, I'm kind of an intellectual so I'm like oh I, I read through the steps I'm like I'm good I don't need to do them. I'm good I got it we're good 
No, because I had a relapse. I'm like, fuck, really? So it was challenging, but I gave myself permission to say, all right, okay, so I know now I realize I need to do the steps. And again, I, that I went back into the what I did before didn't work, so I need to get over myself, okay, and I need to just go and do the basics. I need to go and actually work the steps, and I need to actually do this thing. Whether that's losing weight or getting healthy relationships or getting out of debt or learning how to market so that you can bring clients into your business, whatever that is, give yourself permission to get over your damn self, stop all the stuff that you're doing that's not working and learn something new. And all of this, all of this comes with stopping what you're doing, assessing where you're at today, calling yourself on your own bullshit and say, okay, where am I at? Boom, this is where I'm at. Where do I wanna be? Boom, here. Okay, so now we got the bridge. Where I was at, I had unhealthy relationships. They were codependent. They were full of bullshit, full of heartache and sadness and everything in between. And I was done, I'm like, all right, I'm done. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. So what did I do? I moved into a space of wanting clarity and wanting to figure out what the next step was. And so the, the bridge in between looked like me saying, okay, I'm done. Closed off all romantic and intimate relationships, which there was just that one that I had. I'm like, all right, we're breaking up. I need to fix this shit because this is, I'm not willing to deal with this anymore. So then I waited. So that action, the bridge was the bullshit relationships. The bridge was I need to break up with this person, get very clear with my peeps that I want an answer. So then this was the new place where I was at. So this is the place of waiting, the place of saying, all right, peeps, show me the next step. So then the next step was, what do I really want? So I got clear about that. I want healthy relationships where I can talk with someone and not get, excuse the vernacular, my ass reamed because I'm being honest. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I made a list. I'm like, I want a partner who is legit my freaking partner. You know, and so I'm like, okay, I don't know how to get that because I've never had that before. So then I waited. I waited for that bridge. And then I went to lunch with someone and she said, you do realize you're codependent, right? And I was like, what's that? And I Googled it. <gasps> oh my gosh. All of a sudden I got the answer on how I could get this. So then this answer now became where I currently was at. So that looked like going to meetings, working the steps, getting clear on my bullshit in relationships, understand that if I didn't say anything, that was manipulation. And I hated manipulation. So I'm just like, okay, I need to call myself on my bullshit. And I worked on it. And then I was like, okay, so now this is where I'm at. Where do I wanna be? I wanna be in a healthy partnership with someone. And now I actually feel that that's a viable thing. So these baby steps, so you started here and then you walked here and then you're here and then you're here. So all these little baby steps and where you check in are going to change as you move down the road and as you continue to work on what it is that you're working on. But the key is you're continuously moving. You're moving towards the direction and towards that end result that you truly, truly want. And it all starts from taking a self-assessment of where you're at right now. So today, where are you at? What feels hard for you? What do you not resonate with? What in your life is bullshit? And what do you want instead? So where are you at? What do you want? And do you have the bridge to get there? Most of us, like I said, if you're here, you don't have that bridge because if you had the bridge, you'd be already over here, okay? So if you're trying to lose weight and you already knew what to do to lose weight, you would have lost weight. That would be a non-issue, okay? Getting out of debt, having a healthy partnership, getting clients in your business, all this stuff. These are just small examples. So today, be really honest about where you're at, okay? And where you wanna be. Forget everything that you've already learned about this, you know, well, if I knew what I was doing, then I wouldn't have this problem. Now, many of you then might say, well, 
I know what to do, but I'm just not taking action. Okay, so I challenge you. If you know what to do, if you actually know what to do, and you really are committed, you really, and I gotta call you on your bullshit. If you really want it, you'll be doing it. If you don't really want it, you're gonna say, oh yeah, I wanna lose 50 pounds, but you're not doing anything about it. Or, oh yeah, I really wanna fill my coaching clients. Um, I wanna get five new coaching clients this next month. So then I say, okay, how many sales calls have you done? None. Well then, obviously you're not really committed to getting those five clients, right? So if you really know what to do, this is a challenge for you to start taking action. And if you don't know what to do, you can still take action by saying, where am I at? What do I want? And how can I figure out how to get there? Again, Google it. One of my mentors always says, just Google that shit. Just Google that shit. <laughs> but seriously, Google it or ask a trusted advisor. I mean, it's as simple as that. Ask someone who's been there, done that, who has already done what you want to do. It's truly that simple. So if you want my help with this, I have free strategy sessions and these truly are free strategy sessions. There's no strings attached. What I want you to do is I want you to click the link below in this video, um, whether you're watching this on YouTube, on Facebook, on my website, if you clicked on this from my newsletter, give yourself permission to just say, you know what? I know where I'm at and I know the bullshit that I'm ready and willing to get rid of and to stop doing. I know where I wanna go or wanna be, but I'm not quite sure how to bridge that gap. I'm not quite sure how to get there. So what I want you to do, click the link below for the strategy session, book the strategy session. When you click the link, it's gonna take you to a coaching application form. This is so that I can get to know you a little bit better before our session. If, if things don't apply to you, just put NA or that they don't apply or whatever. And let me know where you are right now and where you wanna be and I can help you get to where that is. Whether it's referring you to a book or another coach or a class or a local group, whatever it is, or even some of my programs, whatever it is, y'all know I don't candy coat anything. <laughs> and I don't bullshit you. So if you really want my guidance, if you want my recommendations, and if you're ready to take action, click the link, grab a free strategy session, and let's get you started on the path to happiness, joy, and ease. All right, I love you all, and I hope to speak with you on the phone soon. Mwah. Bye.